Hey, Senator, welcome and thank you so much for being here. Mm -hmm. As we watch those horrific images play out before our very eyes, we see a situation only getting worse there. Now we're learning of a new Russian strategy. Are we doing enough to respond to the atrocities that are happening over there? No. In Ukraine, America needs to do what is, uh, what is legal. We need to do what is justified and we need to do what is right. I don't want America to be the world's policeman, but I don't want Russia and China to be either. And I, I just don't get the feeling that the Biden administration is truly committed to Ukraine winning this war and to the defeat of Russia. Uh, th this is not a uh, Princeton-Yale fencing club match. This is a prison yard brawl. Putin and she, and yes, she is involved. These are hard men. And, and, and yet the, the administration wants to talk about strategic conceptual wins and strategic conceptual defeats and hearts and minds. To Putin, hearts and minds are the two best places to shoot someone. Now, we need to do more. The sanctions are tough. But the president knows they can be a lot tougher. We need to make them tougher. Number two, we need to give Zelensky the weapons that he needs. I'm not talking about American tanks or planes or troops, but, but I'm talking about the, uh, the anti-aircraft, the anti-ship, ship, the surface-to-air missiles, the tanks, the planes that our European allies have offered to provide, but President Biden has said no. And number three, we need to cut off Putin's cash flow. I, I, I just I hope I'm wrong, Sandra, but I just get the impression that the Biden administration is sort of wringing its hands. And if they could, they would pass this problem off to a summit or something uh, led by experts like and, and consultants and and Leonardo DiCaprio. I mean, they, they, this is a war and we've got to help win it. Well, to your point about cutting off Putin's cash flow, um, he seems to only be building his war chest and it's funded by energy payments. We know the energy is still flowing from Russia to many parts of Europe. Uh, $20 billion paid by the EU since the start of this war. Uh, on day 41 now, Senator, uh, we can put the figures up on the screen. $320 billion is the projected earnings uh, this year for Vladimir Putin. So we only continue to line his pocket as you see this chart here. This is Russia's energy earnings year by year. It's at the highest it's been in years. Uh, look at 2022, topping 300 billion it is expected this year. So I'll ask you what we can do as it is re being reported over the wires literally right now uh, that it is expected the U.S. is going to announce more sanctions tomorrow. But what do we do? How do we cut off? How specifically do we cut off that cash flow to Putin? Well, I hear you about the sanctions. My question is why they did, didn't the Biden administration do them before. Hmm. But to answer your question, this is pretty straightforward. We're not going to win this war unless we cut off Putin's cash flow. We're not going to put, cut off his cash flow unless we can get Europe to stop buying his oil and gas. Mm -hmm. Europe can't stop buying its oil and gas until we can help Europe fill the gap in terms of its oil can and we? gas. Can we? And sure we can. But the pres president has got to take his boot off the throat of the oil and gas industry. He hasn't. The other day he said, well, we're going to start selling more LNG uh, to, to our friends in Europe. Yeah, but read the fine print. He said, but I only want to sell LNG that is, is produced through clean energy. I don't know an LNG plant that runs off wind or solar. Mm -hmm. And then he said, and by the way, I am not going to change the regulatory environment through which I'm trying to put the oil and gas out of business. Senator, at the same time, you're saying that the Biden administration has got to take the boot off the throat of the oil and gas industry. They're doing quite the opposite. I mean, you look what Democrats are doing in Congress, and they are bringing in top oil and gas executives uh, onto Capitol Hill tomorrow. They're sitting them down for this hearing, the, the Energy and Subcommittee, uh, Energy and Commerce Subcommittee, and they're going to accuse them of price gouging. This is the chairman of that committee. Just to give you a little bit of what we are going to hear from these members of Congress, listen to this. 
Well, the problem is that they, you know, they're gouging, in my opinion, artificially keeping um, prices high so they can make more profits. And they just keep talking to their shareholders about the profits that they're making. And meanwhile, the American people are suffering. And uh, they're blaming Ukraine, and you basically use it as an excuse. I mean, it's, it's almost hard to believe. We're going to talk to our panel coming up, AOC. She's saying that they need to do their fair part, the oil and gas industry. So at the same time you're saying they need to let up, it seems they're doubling down. They are. Too many of my Democratic colleagues, led by the Biden administration, are determined to win the uber-woke socialist sweepstakes. And, and, and part of winning means uh, destroying the fossil fuel industry. Hmm. And what President Biden keeps saying to the fossil fuel industry is, look, I'm, I'm going to put you out of business, but in the meantime, to help me out here, uh, I need you to produce more. Uh, you know, um, it's, it's just ridiculous. It is what's happening. I can't even make this up. Actually, a Bloomberg reporter said that just that a few minutes ago, tweeted out, I have no words, with an attachment to a new Wall Street Journal article headlined, U.S. wants more oil from Canada but not a new pipeline to bring it. The White House still opposes Keystone, but other options could include shipping more oil by rail or the expanding Biden pipeline the, capacity along existing routes. The Biden administration, this is all a special kind of stupid. That's all it is. The Biden administration knows what it needs mm. to do, and it says, well, we'll do anything to, to, except what works. Right. It's a special kind of stupid. Well, at the same time that they're accusing those um, gas stations of gouging, 95% of those are the little guys. They're bringing in the big oil companies tomorrow to accuse them. Um, so it's really something. We've got the biggest representation of the oil and gas industry in this country. The American Petroleum Institute uh, is going to join us next hour. We'll ask them about all this. Senator, we really appreciate you joining us. Um, you bet. Thank you very much, sir.